26 Pope Street and I thank you all who are watching worldwide that you will be blessed in this service today that you will hear a word from God and not me Lord God I thank you Lord God that you will have your way in this service today Lord God that you will use your servant Lord God and use it for the benefit of for you Lord God that bring souls into the kingdom of God we thank you Lord in Jesus holy name Amen. 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 My name is Pastor Isabel Jones. I'm glad to be with you all today to give a word for you from the Lord. And my scriptures is going to be from Exodus 32, 1 to 14. And my title is, Which God Are You Serving? Now, which God are you serving? Some people serve man, some people serve God. Which God are you serving? Hallelujah. And I'm into the book of Exodus 32, the chapter Exodus 32, and they talk about the golden calf. And Jesus and Israel step into idolatry at this time. And so I want to read a scripture. Now when the people saw that Moses was delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aaron and say to him, come make us gods that shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Now, you know, because of Moses' delay of coming down, Moses been up there for about, over a month, for about 40 days. And so the people was impatient and there was trouble. And because Moses did not come down and they didn't see Moses. And so, you know, Moses was there, like I said, for 40 days. And they probably thought he might have was dead because, you know, they seen up there because they didn't want to get close by them, uh, that fire or that anointing or whatever on that hill, you know, because of their sins and things going on. And so um, how we handle God ordained delay is good measure of our spiritual immaturity. If we allow such delay to make us drift off in the sin and last lapse into a resignation of faith, it, that would be a po poorly to his ordained delay. You know, we got to know how to wait for God, you know, deepen our preservation to, in following God, and then, you know, that would be a good thing. We can't just, just go before him and he haven't tell us to yet. Amen. Okay, and they also say in that scripture, the people gather together to Aaron and say to him. Now, see, they turn from God and they gather to Aaron. And see, this sinful, this is sinful, you know, just taking the eyes off God and to man. See, people can make man become their God. So this is a sinful impulse that came from the people, you know, not Aaron, but, you know, it came from the people. An example of where the will of the people is not always the will of God. Amen. When it comes to representing God in the world and serving mankind, danger will start to come in. And the people want what they can feel and what they can see. See, they want what they can feel and what they can see. And they haven't seen God, seen Moses. Moses was supposed to be a, 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 like a God. You know, he was interceding for them. He was going up to the mountain and he was praying and interceding and waiting on God. You know, you can't rush God timing. Okay, so the next thing they was talking about in that scripture, they say, come, make us God that shall go before us. So the people want to, wanted, want, wanted God to go before them, to lead them in the promised land. They must have forgot about what God did with the Ten Commandments, and they heard God and all that. Little as we know, we'll forget. That flesh is willing to do some wicked things. And so the Lord, they knew the Lord led them out of Egypt, and they knew the Lord had revealed himself in at Mount Sinai. But 
they was willing to trust a God that they could make to finish what the Lord began. They thought they can make another God so they can see to finish what the Lord began. So Israel wanted a human king, not the invisible divine king. They wanted a, a human king, a God with a face like everybody. You know, this was dealt in the book of Galatians. In Galatians 3.3, 3, it is possible to begin the Christian life trusting Jesus, then at a later time to trust self or one own spirituality. So, you know, people wanted, uh, you know, to trust themselves, trust self. Okay, the next uh, thing they talk about in the scripture, we do not know what has become of him. Not knowing led Israel into sin. Frustrated because of uncertainty, Israel turned to adultery and sin. So, you know, because they didn't see Moses anymore, or, you know, 40 days was too long for them. So they turned to adultery and sin. And that might have supposed that Moses had, they thought Moses might have perished in the fire because they didn't see him. They didn't know what happened to Moses. He might have got killed or something. So they want something that they can see for sure that they know because they got their eyes on the face, you know, of man. Amen. So um, the, the revealing of the attitude of the people had been neglected God work to a, a mortal, mere mortal. They wanted a mortal, something that they can see. So in Exodus 32, 2 to 4, Aaron respond to the people request. And it read, and Aaron said to them, break off the golden earring which are in the ears of your wives, your son, and your daughter, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earring which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hands, and he fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a mortal calf. Then they say, this is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Wow. And that God was with a small g. Yeah. You know, they want to worship, start worshiping something else instead of God. They must have forgot about what God done to them. And the next thing that was in the little scripture, it said, break off the golden earring and bring it to, to me. You know, God told Moses to receive a free will offering to gather material for the tabernacle. And that was in uh, Exodus 25, 1 to 7. Before Moses came down from Mount Sinai and received this God commandment offering, God received this offering of gold to make an, excuse me, Aaron received this offering of gold to make an idol. And the people was generous in their response. You know, they was excited. You know, they, they, you know, a lot of people don't want to give up their gold or anything, but they were generous because this was the flesh. And it was man. All the people broke off the golden earring, and brought them to Aram. And by nature, people are generous in what they can give to their idol. You know, today, people are worshiping and doing things out of the ordinary to idols. You know, you can make anything your idol, and you will not know. You will not know what you are doing, but you are serving idol. People, many are serving idol. Yeah. What you spending your time to, what you spending most of your time to, that is an idol to you. You can make an idol by playing games. You can make out of out of a family member. You can make out of out of a, a car, a house. You know, some people go to church because they got a nice house. They'll wash their cars, a truck, or whatever they have on Sunday, and see that can become an idol worshiper. Okay, we should be even more generous with what we given to the living God. You know, when it comes time to give something to God. They're not generous, but, you know, to give to the flesh, they can give more generous. Like going to a game. You can see thousands of people going to the game. The stadium is full up with people buying tickets where they can pay tithes or giving to the kingdom of God. And want to give something to God, they're not generous with that. Why is that so? Aaron instruct the people to take off, to tear off all their golden earrings. He, and it's to talk about in that same scripture. 
he fashioned it with an engraving tool. You know, it wasn't about craft uh, bells inspired craftsmanship of Belsley L, you know, or what big pie? And how would it work? <laughs> and a whole yeah mentioned in Exodus 31, 1 to 6. This was a sin. What they did was a sin inspired work of Aram. This was from Aram. Now you come to church and your pastor, or your leader, you know, you depend on your leader to give you the right instruction, spiritual instruction. And Aaron at that time, because Moses had left to be the president of the Lord to intercede for them and whatever God need for him, but he had Moses in charge. And so Moses got to be strong. You got to be strong when people come to you and you can't agree to, with them, even though there's so many people. That's why people are falling into that same old thing, what the people want. You got to be bold and stand up for the word of God. And it kind of remind me of how they were talking about with the football, with the bowing down or to the flag or the automata, animata, uh But you know what? I would not bow down to nothing, no God, no man. So this was a sin-inspired work of uh, Aaron. He thought it out. Aaron was the one that had thought it out. He was the one that melt the gold. He molded and fashioned it carefully with an engraving tube. All this came from their leader. And their leader should have stand up and, you know, told, the, told him that this was wrong, to tell him that this was wrong. So a modern calf. Calf is not a translation of the Hebrew word egal. It's a young bull in his first strength. Okay, the next thing that came out of the scripture, they say, this is your God. Aaron did not anoint this thing as their God. He simply went, he went along with it and proclaimed it as their God. I mean, he's still doing bad. He should have told them that this is not God. And when you see God, that's a small G. That's their God. So he was probably flatter, you know, with the admiration. You know, they were so excited. So he was flatter, and that made him feel so good. But a true leader would have cried out, this is an adultery. And we must destroy this. They need to destroy that. You are people are wrong in calling this creation of man your God. But Aaron, he wasn't a true leader. You got to be so mindful who you under, wherever you go to church and who you under. You want to be under a true leader, speaking the true word of God. So he, he was, this was an example of the one who led by the following popular opinion. So he led by their opinion. Amen. And the next thing they talk about in the scripture that they brought you out of the land of Egypt. Okay, this shows the foolishness of idolatry. And this station of a calf did not exist in the day. Yet they worship it as a God that brought them out of Egypt. You know, God is not satisfied with, the, with that. You know, God can hear every word they're saying. God know what they're going through. And God, he may not be right there by you. And they want man so they can, no man can hear it and all that. But God He's just a teller. He's just a pipeliner where God can hear. You can talk to God and pray and everything. God is right there. And they want to serve something else and say that that thing will bring them out of Egypt. In Exodus, Exodus 32, 5 to 6, ungodly and immoral worship at the golden calf. So when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. When Aaron saw it, he built an altar. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Then they rose early on the next day, offered burnt offering, and brought peace offering. And the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Wow. So in that scripture, it said when Aaron saw it, saw it. So Aaron was flattered by the enthusiastic response of the people. You know, that little stuff will make this flesh feel so good. You know, this flesh will get out of the way. If you don't have enough God in you, this flesh will uh, uh, get in the way of God. You got to have more word in you. It's like you going uh, in your car 
And when, when you drive, you know, you can go but so far, and the gas is going to go out. Yeah. And it's going to be where, you know, you're going to stop. And if you don't have the word in you, you know that flesh is going to start rising up because you ain't feeding with the word of God. You're not fellowship. You're not doing nothing. And then you're going to become self. You have to fill your temper up with the word of God. So when Aaron saw it, Aaron was flattered. Like I said, he was enthusiastic of the response of the people. And when he saw that the devotion to this idol, then Aaron, he had built an altar before it. That's another bad thing what he did. He built an altar for it. He began to organize, he began to organize a worship of the idol he had just made. Wow. And that was bad enough. He had made a golden calf for the people to praise to escape from Egypt. But Aaron, Aaron did a second thing. Yeah. He honored and sacrificed the idol with an animal sacrifice. He made a calf. And he made the altar to worship him. Wow. Lord have mercy. And the next thing they talk about in the scripture that tomorrow, he said tomorrow is going to be a feast day to the Lord. Aaron and the rest of Israel probably thought that they could give honor to the Lord through the golden calf. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and so Aaron didn't take away the Lord God. It's still bad what he was doing. But he simply added the golden calf. The word said you can't serve to God. You can't serve. It's either man or either God. Yeah. Serve man or God. Yeah. And, and or whatever other thing you're going to serve. You know, could talk. You know, any kind of stature or anything. Buddha, you know, rubbing on that stomach. All, serve man or God. They got many different idolatry things that you can serve. But the only one thing that you can serve is the Lord Jesus Christ. And God is a jealous God. He loves you. He came to this earth 2,000 years ago to save us from the pit of hell. And yet people don't know what he did. Was beaten and bruised. Suffer. He was so bad that you couldn't even identify him. He died and rose again from the grave. And he conquered hell and death. That was a great day, what he had done for us. He did all this in a man body. Yes. And he was the first man that seated on the right throne of the Father. Yes. Well done, my good and faithful servant. So they rose early on the next day. They served their idol with, with it, it, eagerness. You know, they served this idol with eagerness. You know, just think about serving that and, and the way people come to church. You know, how they serving God bored and getting on their phone and talking they disrespect God but this thing what they serve this just like going to a game they serve it with eagerness energy personal sacrifice people used to find a way to rise early for the thing that they are really important to them you know too many people not going to rise early for the word of God or going to church but you tell them that, you know, you're going shopping or you're going to a game or you're going out of town. Man, they're going to plan and have their stuff laid out that night and ready to go in the morning on time. So this showed that Israel were willing to give their time, their sleep, and their money to the servants of this outer. Wow. The next thing they talk about in that scripture was offer burnt offering and brought peace offering. Abram might make a calf, but the people made it a god by adoring it. And the next thing they were saying in the scripture, and rose up to play. So immorality among the people of Israel, just speak of the, gro the gross of immorality among the people of Israel. Yeah. They were eating, they were drinking, and sexual immorality. You know, people was having a good time. Amen. And less than two months in the book of Genesis 26, 8, and 39, 14, and 39, 17, that was less than two months before this Israel heard the voice of God himself from heaven. It was an audio voice, audio, audibly um, voice speaking to the, about the, the Ten Commandments to the nation. You know, the, the, the people of Israel, they heard God speaking to them about the nation. I mean, he heard it like the way I'm talking to you. They heard it, his voice. But did you think that changed their heart? 
It made many of them desire less demanding God with a small g. You know, it seemed impossible that soon after you received such a good revelation, Israel could fall so low. But Christian today, their experience, this th same thing is going on in life today. God uh, 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 speak to them, but you know what? They'll forget. They'll act like they ain't never heard, and they'll serve the world or serve another God, idolatry. And the, nat the nature and result of Moses' intercession. God tell Moses what is happening at the camp of Israel. That's in Exodus 32, 7 to 8. And the Lord said to Moses, go down. For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt had corrupted themselves. They had turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They had made themselves a mortal calf and worship it and sacrifice to it and say, This is your God, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Wow. And they say in the verse, For your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, God called Israel your people in the sense that belongs to Moses. <laughs> God has said to Moses that your people is not God. God suggested to Moses that he had or was about to, to disown Israel. You know, when he said that, it was about the Lord disowning Israel. So they had turned aside quickly. They didn't walk long to go their own sinful way. You know, they also talk about that they had made themselves a modern calf and worship it and sacrifice to it. God described Moses to God described to Moses everything that happened. You know, this is what, what the people was doing while Moses was up there. Even God had quoted the words of what the people were saying about this idolatry. God knew exactly. He couldn't stop it, but he going to let them do what they're going to do. God knew exactly what happened. But you know what? And they know good and what is right and what is wrong. But the people ignored God. But he did not ignore them. In Exodus 32, 9, 10, it talk about God amazing offered to Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people and indeed it's stiff-necked people now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. And that scripture is say, I have seen this people, and indeed, it's a stiff-necked people. God spoke as if he seen enough. He seen enough. He made a remarkable, remarkable offer, offer to Moses. If Moses would only agree, God would consume Israel and start all over again. You know, Moses was like Jesus. Right now, what Jesus is doing, he was in the scene on the behalf of the people of Israel. And he said, I will make of you a great nation. Okay, and the next thing they were saying, you know, he, you know, God, God could have done this and still fulfill every promise made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even though if he would have started back over. But um, he, it was talking about how they are stiff-necked. You know, that's just like an ox or a horse that will not respond to the rope when you tug it. My. And that's how the people of Israel was. I mean, they are just, they were just hard-headed. And they said, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them. God did not ask for the opinion or participation participate of Moses in this um, matter. He, he simply told Moses, let me alone so I can do this. The clear impression was that if Moses did, not, did nothing, the plan would go ahead. You know, God was really dissatisfied with the people of Israel. In Exodus 32, 11 to 13, Moses in a sea for Israel. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hard against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians speak and say, he brought them out to harm them and to kill them in the mountain and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your wrath and relent from this harm to your people. Remember Abraham, 
Isaac and Israel, your servant, to whom you sworn by your own self, and say to them, I will multiply your descendant as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of I give to your descendant, and they shall inherit it forever. It, you know, in that scripture, it was saying that Moses plead with the Lord, his God. Moses refused to do nothing. You know, Moses plead with the Lord according to what he believed to be God's heart. You know, he was a man that he was in the scene for us because we did wrong at that time. Moses' prayer was not long. You know, he didn't have a long, loud prayer, but it was a strong prayer prayer his prayer has strength to appeal to heaven and you know you, when you pray you need prayer with strength don't pray a little soft prayer low that you can't even hear as loud as you are you know pray prayer with strength use God's word in that scripture it's talk about the people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt Moses first he gave the people back to God it wasn't his people he gave it back to God they belong to you, not to me, God. <laughs> Amen. So the next thing they were saying, people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt. Moses then appealed to God on the basis of grace. Amen. And they also talk about why should the Egyptians speak. Moses appeared to God on the basis of glory. The Egyptian will think of you as a cruel God. This is what Moses was telling God. They will think of you as a cruel God who led your people out to the desert to kill them. Don't let anybody think that of you, God. <laughs> so Moses was filled with compassion. That's how Christ saw for the people. But his chief concern was the honor of the name of God. Amen. And they also talk about in that scripture, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servant to whom you sworn by your own self. Moses appeared to God on the basis of his goodness. Lord, keep your promise. You are a good God who is always faithful. Don't break your promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Sometimes we might need to say that to God. You know, the things that you might be going through, you know, give him, speak back his word. His word will not go back void. Amen. So the Lord that I had promised, that I had promised, he put the promise into suit and you have Anything, God cannot deny his, himself. God cannot deny himself. In Exodus 32 to 14, God relent from his anger. He softened in feeling his temper, and he forgive. So the Lord relent from the harm which he said he would do to his people. They would have been destroyed just like the flood. So he relent. God answered Moses' prayer. God was going to destroy the nation. All Moses had to do was leave God alone and let him do it. But, Lord, but Moses was there. He was there and he prayed and he, he did not let go, you know, intercede on our behalf. But Moses did not leave God alone. He labored in intersection according to what he knew the heart of God. Could we do that today? Could we labor for others? For the world, what's going on, instead of talking about what's going on, because you can get caught up with the things of this world. We need prayer warriors to get back on their posts, to labor and to pray of the things that are going on, the idolatry, the killing, the violence, the things that are going on, and just get on our knees. You know the heart of God. So the Lord relent. He relent. He repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. He, based on this, some people believe that, you know, some God sometimes needs to repent of evil or that God changed his mind. But I ain't against that because I think God is a good God. Hallelujah. He changed his mind about the harm which he, he said he would do to his people. And right now, if you know that you have been serving other gods, that you know that you got off board of God, and you don't have you you haven't put your time, your love, and your energy on God. 
you need to come and join a church or get into the word and get into the word, the Bible, the word. You need to have a relationship with God, just like you have a relationship with your husband or with your kids. You need to have a relationship with God. It's going to be a time when the door is going to close. And when the doors close, it's going to be too late. You want to be your name to be written in the Lamb Book of Life. As in the days of Noah, when that ship door closed, those that who was partying, having fun, eating, drinking, and marry, the doors closed, then that water came and it flooded. It's going to be a time when God come and crack that cloud, that sky, and he will come back for his bride. He will come back for his church. But those who are not right with God will be left behind. And where are we going from next, when we leave here next time? Not next time. When we go, it's not going to be another time. Where we go, it's going to be eternity. It's either be heaven or hell. It's no way out. Seriously. People may not want to hear this, but there's no way out. Today, if you want to give your heart to the Lord, you can touch that TV, you can touch that dial, you can touch the one hand, but accept the Lord in your heart today. Believe that he died. He, died. he came to this earth and he died for us. He died for us and he was risen from the grave. And he was like that vine tree with the branches, the, vine, the branches get their energy from that vine. God is that vine. When he was rose from the dead, he made more little gods, more people like him on that tree. He was on that tree. He's the vine, and we are the branch. We are his people. We need God in our life. If you don't have God, that branch is going to just fall and rot off. We need God in our life. Accept him as your Lord and Savior today. I pray you all will be blessed from this word in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Mm -hmm.